Christopher Spike from Minimal 3DP and today I'm taking a look at the latest release of Orca Slicer. I just did a video on the release candidate yesterday and it turns out that the full release, the official release, has dropped today. So let's go ahead and take a look. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the Minimal 3DP channel on this video in particular. So as I mentioned, the latest release is out today. Take a look at what's included in this release. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with typical software development process, the way it looks is you have a beta release. Sometimes you do a release candidate, and that's usually a version that's almost finished, and then you have an official release. And the way it works is all those changes, which have in the beta, rolls into the release candidate, which rolls into the official release. So to review, I'm going to post above a video I did previously on the beta release. You could take a look at that. Big changes there are there's support for textured plates. There's improvements with the fuzzy skin and improvements with the way that shapes are joined together. Also, if we look at this, there's also changes to some of the tests and the infill patterns. So all this adds up to some pretty awesome changes. There's also a new calibration and that new calibration for flow is pretty exacting and pretty detailed. The only issue with it is it does take a little while to run. But again, it's pretty neat. And I took a look at a lot of these features in the video I've posted above. Now for the release candidate, I just recently posted about that. And the big feature I covered there was this quality of life feature, where now when you're doing settings overrides within the filament tab, it actually has the values filled in. And you can see that here on the right-hand side of the screen as those values filled in from the printer settings. That's really handy because if you're like me, you can never remember what the previous value was. So you're switching back and forth, switching back and forth. And again, I'm going to post above the video that detailed that so you could take a look at me looking at those changes. The other big change was how it handles imports of Prusa design elements. Prusa has the ability to do some simple designs and including embossing text. And those imports previously weren't handled correctly. In this before picture, you see how it has a one, two, three embossed. When it's imported into Orca Slicer, it actually eliminates any of those other features. And again, the next image shows how it's now accepting those particularly void features. And then there's some other bug fixes and whatnot. So again, pretty cool changes. So let's take a look now at the official release. Now the big change here appears to be the PA pattern calibration. And if you look, it now shows the max flow value and the acceleration at the bottom of the PA pattern. And that's again, really helpful because if you're like me, it helps to have the references right there in front of you so you can see what that looks like. Now, scrolling down, there's a lot of bug fixes, some bug fixes with movement and some different things with AMS. Looking through, there's some profiles have been updated and some other different crash fixes. And there's a lot of different stuff here. Now, as I mentioned, they have lots of different version. So you want to look and download the version that's appropriate for your operating system. Now, in my case, when I updated on my Mac, it overwrote the previous versions, but it did use all my profiles. So I didn't lose anything. Now, I pointed this out in a previous video. I want to point it out here. If you have any issues with the software, you need to have a GitHub account. You should create one anyway. You're going to go up to issues and you're going to file a bug report. Now, the proper way to file a bug report is 
list the problem, list the version of the software you're on, the operating system you're using, and any other relevant information you can list. You want to go ahead and list how you could produce the bug you found. If you can't reproduce it, I probably wouldn't post until you have some more information because how are the developers going to know what the bug is if they can't reproduce it? You want to include any relevant screenshots or log files you might have and then post that. That's the best way to do a bug report. That way, there's as much detail as possible for the developers to go from. Now, let's switch over and take a look at the latest version of Work Slicer. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome service that lets you design and then they build for you PCB boards. One of their awesome features is you can go to their instant quote, you can upload a Gerber file, and then based on the parameters you put in, they'll give you an instant quote. I have work slicer up on my screen. Let me expand this. And it, everything looks pretty normal. I have my profile here for my Ender 3 S1 Plus. If anybody's ever curious, I typically test everything on the Ender 3 S1 Plus because I found this printer to be the most reliable I have. It seems like no matter what I do to it, it just works. Some of my other printers can be a little temperamental. Um, now, ironically, this was one of the cheaper printers I have because I brought it bo broken and fixed it. And I think I did a video on that and I may link that above as well. So let's take a look at how the new PA pattern. I'm going to go up to the top and hit calibration. Click on pressure advance. And then let's select PA pattern. And I'm going to leave this all as is. I am using a direct drive. I'm going to leave all the other options as is, and let's just hit OK. Now, what it does, and this can be a little confusing, is there's a tiny little dot here, and you can't really tell what the heck that is. If I go over to Preview, it then shows it, and you'll notice at the bottom here, it's now showing my max flow rate and my max speed, or I'm sorry, my max acceleration. But what's interesting is I probably have both of these set too low for this machine. I probably go much higher. This actually has a high speed nozzle on it. And so I'm wondering now, have I not calibrated this profile? Now, I'm also going to apologize uh, for those of you that watch several of my videos. My daughter's cat loves to sit in here and mess with all my stuff as I'm recording. And she is now knocking around some of my boxes, trying to knock things onto the floor. When I switch over, we might be able to see her on the camera. So I have this in here. What I'm going to do is let me prepare the printer and I'm going to print this and we'll take a look at what this looks like. Now you might actually hear the cat purring because she's just discovered she can nudge the microphone. So this just keeps going and going. I, my door unfortunately does not latch. So now I'm going to need to look for a 3D printed part to latch my door so no pets or animals can get in here. Sorry about that. I accidentally looked at the wrong view. So let's take this and I'm on my Ender 3 S1 Plus. I'm going to hit print and hit upload and print. And that should be sent to the printer. So let me look and that is indeed starting. So I'll give that a little bit and we'll come back and take a look at it on the printer. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that I finished the PA pattern. And if you look real carefully on the right hand side, you'll actually see my flow rate and my max acceleration. So that's pretty cool. Now it also looks like I need to work on this a little bit and maybe tune this printer a little bit better. Now, something I did notice with this, and I don't know if it's my printer or if it's a possible bug, so I have to investigate it further. But I had some trouble printing. I have adaptive bed mesh code on my Sonic pad, which is running this printer. And that did give me a problem where it kept, when it was probing, saying probe was out of range. Now, when I turned off the adaptive, probe 
and just went with the standard probe the whole bed, there was no problem. So I, I need to look at that code and that maybe there, there's some issue there. So I need to look at that a little further. But again, pretty cool feature. And as I mentioned, there's a bunch of new features to look at and review. You can look at my previous videos listed above. I'm also going to add a playlist of all my Orca Slicer content. So I appreciate you taking your time to look at this with me. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Hope you have a great night. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15 minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.